Because once you accept that mental construct and you allow it to dominate your thinking, you become an element of it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You have to, because at that point in time, you've agreed to it. Right. So to you, right. this is a real thing. Absolutely. And so that's the problem we live in now, because I was talking to one dude, and I said, well, we have a conversation about jurisdiction or whatever. So I was just like, all right, I said, well, what state you live in? And the dude said, Illinois. I said, that's interesting. I said, I don't see nothing around here to say Illinois. I said, how you know you live in the state of Illinois? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. Right. I mean, everybody live, live in the right. state of Illinois. I said, but how could that be? Because if I get a copy of the Illinois Constitution, there's no description of landmass, no rivers, no mountains, none of that. I said, so now, how did you deduce the fact that you live in Illinois other than the fact that somebody told you that? Right. And he was like, well, what's, mm -hmm. what state you live in? I said, I live in a state of peace. You know what I'm saying? And I conduct myself in a state of peace. Because I can live in a state of peace. But I can't live in an agreement between some people who I don't know. You mind if I record you, brother? No, man. Okay. Illinois is an agreement of some people that got together and put together some legislation, not law, some legislation. And they say, all right, this is how we're going to operate. Under this agreement. Right. Okay, and then everybody operate under that agreement, then that's where they live. But is it a place? No. Nah. And so that's the whole issue. So now, can you live in Oz if Oz is not a place, but Kansas is? And this is what they're doing. And it's called a world of color and a world of black and white. And so what's happening is they created this colorable faction, and people living in this colorable, they living in Oz. It ain't even real. Why? Because if you go down there and tear that paper up and you remove the people from saying United States, Illinois, all that kind of stuff, then what happens to the land? Does it disappear? Because I don't say Illinois no more? <coughs> nah, it's right. still going to be here. And so this way, this is where jurisdiction comes in because people don't understand. They think jurisdiction deals with courts and, and all this other stuff. Jurisdiction is made with two words. Juris, which means law, and diction, which means speech. So law is what you speak. So you make the law when you say that, when you agree to certain things. So we out here and we agreeing, somebody came up with a name for all these inhabitants. It's like, yeah, snake clan, bird clan, and all that. And all that. They's all gonna be black, and that's it. So all of them, we just gonna make them all black. We're not gonna give them, we're not give them no, no, no designations anymore. We're just gonna make it one thing. And so what happened was, people was like, no, I'm from the turtle clan. I'm from this, I'm from that. Like, well, you wanna get this money, you have to be black. Well, I do need some money. <laughs> I know who I am, though. I'd be black to get the money. But nah, <laughs> you black would be the money. That's cool. But now nah, you got a child now. Mm -hmm. And now your child think they need this money. Right. So now the way they get this money, they got to be black. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So now you watch a whole generation just be subverted. Yep. Further, f further the generation goes, the more black they get and the less bear clan they are. And it's interesting because the black people come up with the name black people for black people. Like, we look at each other and be like, we black people. I look at your shirt, I'll say, them the black boy. These are black people because they got on black clothes. But if what if you come in wearing red? Then what am I going to say? See mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so this is, this is the whole process. But nobody wants to think about it like that due to the fact that it takes too much accountability. Now, now you got to yeah. be responsible for something. Yep. So it's just kind of like, nah, man, I, I ain't going that deep into that. Look, just give me the money. Let me go ahead and operate out here and do whatever I got to do. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm straight. And that's all built on living for the flesh. You know, what I'm saying? and when you live just for the flesh, then all you really gonna get is anything that deals with. It's got to deal with tangibility, which means it's gonna deal with some form of stress, tension, and pressure. Has to. You got blood pressure in your body, mm. and if you lift something, there's a certain degree of tension that must be engaged. You have to deal with it. The problem that happens is when there's so much of it, you can't deal with it, and then we start acting other than who we really are. And so, one of the biggest things they're using right now in our community is stress. Because it's like when you're stressed out, I can get you to, to go to the hospital. I can get you to do something, go to jail. I can get you to do something that'll make you compromise your principles because you're under a lot of pressure. And so peace is, is really where our wealth is. And that's why they have anything that attacks us, relaxing, getting along, unifying, being respectful of each other. they scared of that. As crazy as that may sound to us, they're really afraid of that. There's no peace. Be, see what I'm saying? Because it's like you... You can't dominate a people who are living in peace. Because now, what, what can you offer me? Mm. I'm like, man, I got that. I'm straight. Right. I got my friends. I got my family. I got food. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I might not have the best of everything. I might right. not have the newest shoes. I might not have the cleanest of clothes. My body clean. You know what exactly. I'm saying? I might not have the shiniest jewelry. But I have me. Exactly. I got my people. You know what I'm saying? And so this is the whole thing where they come in. First, they're going to take your people from you. We're going to rearrange. We're going to name them something else. We're going to do this. We're going to... Then we're going to take certain people, and that's what I think is interesting. We're going to take certain people, 
He looked just like you. Exactly like you. But we're going to inform them of who they are. So you have people, if you go to Puerto Rico, it's a dude look just like you. I know it's a dude look just like you, probably Puerto Rico, some Colombia, something. Mm -hmm. And he asked him, like, man, you black? Like, I'm Colombian. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so it's kind of, what, 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 what's going on? And so then you start looking at how did black and white get in. So you start looking at what game, as a game that they playing, what game deals with black and white? Dice. That's interesting too. Even though they do have red dice in the casino. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. What you're right. game deals with black and white? Chess. International. Chess. Chess. And the whites always move first. When does chess become a race? <laughs> See, you got to understand what racism is. When does chess become a race? Very simple answer. When, when, does, when does chess become a race? Because it's black and white, right? Right. Black and white is a race, right? Right. So when does chess become a race? I don't know. When you get down to the last pieces? When you add a clock. Right, they be doing the speed of. And you add a clock. Right. It becomes a race. Right. You're racing against the clock. Yeah. These people are racing against the clock. Who moved first? White's over. Who right. racing against the clock first? Mm. Now that's deep. That's deep. They racing against the clock. Why? Because they time running out? Why you even put the clock in there? You know what I'm saying? Right. It was never needed before. Never did. Mm -hmm. But they need to add what? Pressure. How do you add pressure? Put them on the clock. And so that's what they did. So they put them on the clock, and they created this pressure syndrome. So now we got to understand Master ratio. That's the building their frontline bookstore. Race and ratio and how it works. You have race, which is a game, but you have to think of, hey, how you doing? You have a thing called ratio, which deals with percentages. When they talk about the rat race, they talk about the ratio. So now you're dealing with the race card. So so many of these black people, so many of these white people, and then we run out of colors. Ain't no yellow people, ain't no orange people, brown, green. What's going on, bro? All right. And so this is what happens. So now we fall into this construct now. A whole other construct which basically says you have to operate according to these moves or you're going to lose. And so now you're looking at, even when we're dealing with that, what is the loss and who are we losing it from? You're going to lose your freedom. You're going to take this. You know, they have all these different things, you know what I'm saying? It's, and really, you have to have a value in it and they'll them to take it from you. If you have no value in it, then them takers don't mean nothing. So now, when the value is in you, are oh, you ready, bro? Come on, yeah. No, I don't want to disturb you. Oh, no, I know you're talking about it. Yeah, when the value is in you, 